Hey everyone, welcome to lesson 4, exercise 5, day 15. Take this time to pause this video and to say your daily prayers out loud. Today we will be reviewing O words. We are going to work with words that make the short O and the long O sound. The short O sound can be spelled with O and is usually followed by one or more consonants. The long O sound can be spelled with O, OA, O a consonant E, or OW. Learn to spell these words. Long O, broke, coast, crow, globe, goal, gold, growth, host, shown, snow, and wrote. Short O, problem, shock, and shop. The family of O words were invited to join the A, E, and I words on their trip, and now they need to pack. Group the words by how they are spelled and put them in the right suitcases. Pause this video and take a moment to finish this exercise. One. Short O words spelled with an O. Problem, shock, and shop. Two, long O words spelled with OA. Coast and goal. Three, long O words spelled with O consonant E. Broke, wrote, and globe. Four, long O words spelled with O W. Crow, snow, Growth and shown. Long O words spelled with an O. Gold and host. Now you write a fun sentence using at least two of your short O spelling words. After that, write a fun sentence using at least two of your long O spelling words. Be sure to start each sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. Welcome to lesson four and day 16. Introduction and exercise one. At this time, please pause and do your daily prayers. Done? Let's get started. Let's read this poem together. It is titled A White Hen Sitting and it is by Christina Georgina Rossetti. Let's start. A white hen sitting on white eggs three. Next, three speckled chickens, as plump as plump can be. An owl and a hawk, and a bat came to see. But chicks beneath their mother's wing, squat safe as safe can be. Were there any words you didn't understand? Circle them, and look up their definition. 
Next, we'll move on to some narration practice. Pause the video and answer the following questions. One, who wrote the poem? Two, what is the poem about? Three, why do you think the author wrote this poem? Four, explain how this poem makes you feel. Done? Let's get the answers. For one, the answer is Christina Georgina Rossetti. Number two, the poem is about a white hen and other characters who came to see the chicks beneath their mother's wing. Three, I think the author wrote this poem because she loves hens. Four, this poem puts me in a good mood. Now let's continue to exercise one. First, we will have you pause this video and try to memorize the poem. You should have it fully memorized by the end of the five exercises this week. After you are done, read the instructions for Animal Sudoku and take some time to have fun and play it. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back to lesson four, exercise two, day 17. At this time, pause this video and do your daily prayer. Remember to pray out loud. And if you have friends or family nearby, ask them to join you in prayer. Done? Great. Today, we will be discussing possessive pronouns. Do you remember what possessive means? Yes, you're right. It means belonging to someone and showing ownership. Do you remember adding an apostrophe or an apostrophe S to nouns to make them possessive? Like cars? We do not do this for pronouns. Instead, we have a whole set of other words that are pronouns that were made specifically to show ownership. We call these possessive pronouns. These possessive pronouns are my, his, her, its, our, your, and their. Know these and memorize them. Study the example. It is my class. What is the possessive pronoun? The possessive pronoun is my. What belongs to the possessive pronoun? The class. It is whose class? It's my class. Again, the possessive pronoun is my and the class belongs to the possessive pronoun. Now, write a sentence using a possessive pronoun. For example, that car is her vehicle. What possessive pronoun did I use? I used her. What belongs to the possessive pronoun? the car because it is her car it's 
Some possessive pronouns can stand alone. What belongs to the possessive pronoun does not have to follow it. Study the chart. Mine, yours, ours, his, hers, and theirs. Please note the pronoun his can be used with a regular possessive pronoun, and it can stand alone. We are going to use the pronoun his in two ways. Study the examples. Mr. C showed us his temple. The temple belongs to Mr. C. It shows his ownership of the temple. Next, it is his. In this sentence, the pronoun his stands alone and signifies that the regular pronoun it belongs to him. Now copy the list of pronouns that can stand alone. After that, write a sentence using a pronoun that can stand alone. For example, the bike is his. Pause this video and complete those exercises. All done? Great, I'll see you next time. Welcome to exercise three, day 18. Today, we will continue our work of sentences. Last time, we went over predicates and subjects. Today, we will go over compound subjects and compound predicates. Compound is a fancy word for more than one. We can have a compound subject, which means more than one subject. Here is an example to study. An owl and bat came to see the chicks. What is the subject of this sentence? That's right, the subject is an owl and bat. This is a compound subject because there are two nouns in the subject, an owl and a bat. Did you notice the conjunction in that compound subject? Remember your list of conjunctions in fanboy. What was the conjunction? Yes, it was and. And was the conjunction tying the compound subject together. Now, write a sentence with a compound subject. You can do it. Pause the video to complete that exercise. Finished? Compound predicates work the same way as compound subjects. It just shows the subject doing more than one thing. For example, the chicken sat and hatched the three eggs. The chicken sat and she hatched the three eggs. It is a compound predicate because it shows that the chicken is doing more than one thing at the same time. Compound subjects and predicates make our sentence more interesting. They can even save us time. I spotted another conjunction in that compound sentence. The chicken sat and hatched the three eggs. Did you see it? What was it? You're right. It was and. Now, write the compound predicate.
Let's make a little story out of our example sentences. Read the story to your teacher. The chicken sat and hatched the three eggs. An owl and bat came to see the chicks. Now, let's see what the story would look like if we didn't use compound subjects and predicates. Read the story to your teacher. The chicken sat on three eggs. The chicken hatched the three eggs. An owl came to see the chicks. A bat came to see the chicks. Which story did you read the quickest? Which story would you want to write down as copy work? Which story sounded better? I think it's the same for all of us when I say using compound subjects and predicates is the best. Now, have some fun and complete the maze. I'll see you next time. Welcome to lesson four, exercise four, day 19. Pause this video and take some time to do your daily prayers. All done. Today, I am assigning you to read David and Goliath on pages 88 through 89 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible. Answer the questions on page 89. Color it in. Pause the video and complete if you have to. Next, copy Psalm 147, 11, and memorize it by the end of this lesson. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Next, copy the picture on page 89. Color it in, then copy the caption from page 89. After you're done, you may move on to the next lesson. Hey everyone, welcome back to this book. Today, we will start lesson 5 as well as exercise 1 for today. First, start by pausing this video and doing your daily prayers. Once you're done, you can return to this video. Done? Great! Let's start by reading Solomon's Temple. Micah had told Jin all about the Lego version of Solomon's Temple. They ran to Micah's class, hoping to get a peek at it. Mr. Cunningham uncovered his creation as he told the boys about the books he studied to make sure the details were all correct. Jin laughed at the little capes on the Lego men in the outer court. Micah sure missed Jin, but he was thankful Mr. C showed them Solomon's temple. The boys said their thanks, then waved a quick goodbye as Jin headed off to his own class. Micah got lost in thought as he studied the Lego temple. He imagined the people in Bible days visiting the temple on the Sabbath, which he had learned about in his Sunday school class with Mr. Lopez. God had told his people to rest on the seventh day of each week, just as he had done the week he created the world. 
Micah also remembered the ram's horn Mr. Lopez had blown when they learned about the Feast of Trumpets, another holy day God set aside for his people to celebrate. As Claire came up behind him, Micah jumped. Claire laughed and reminded Micah it was time for class to start. They both took a seat, but Micah couldn't take his eyes off the temple. He had so many questions for Mr. C. How long did it take to complete? Why did Mr. C build it? Where did Mr. C keep it when it wasn't on display in class? Great. Next, let's move on to some questions. Answer these questions. How does the story begin? What did Micah imagine while looking at Solomon's temple? How does the story end? Take a moment to pause this video and complete the questions. All done? Great, let's go over the answers. 1. The story begins as Micah told Jin all about the Lego version of Solomon's temple, and they run to Micah's class, hoping to peek at it. 2. Micah imagines the people in the Bible days visiting the temple on the Sabbath. 3. The story ends as Claire sneaks up behind Micah and Micah continues to look at the temple. He has many questions about the temple. Now let's dive into the first exercise for this lesson. Memorize the following verse by the end of this lesson. Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Leviticus twenty three twenty four. Next, put the stories in order by writing the correct number under each picture. This is one, two, three, and four. Pause this video and complete the exercise. Great, done? The story's order goes one, two, three, and four. I'll see you next time. Welcome to lesson five, exercise two, day 22. Pause this video and do your daily prayers. All done. For today's lesson, we will be talking about verbs and doing some grammar practice. Do you remember what an action verb is? An action verb tells us that something is happening in a sentence, and it tells us what is happening. For example, take the sentence, Mr. Lopez blew the ram's horn. What is the action verb in the sentence? That's right. The action verb is blue. Action verbs bring our sentences to life. There are many action verbs to choose from. Let's see how we can change a sentence by using a different action verb in the same sentence. 
Micah hopped when Claire surprised him. Micah jumped when Claire surprised him. Micah leaped when Claire surprised him. While all these verbs mean almost the same exact thing, using different verbs can lead to us imagining different things in each scenario. Let's see what happens if we use action verbs that have different meanings in the same sentence. Micah screamed when Claire surprised him. Micah ran when Claire surprised him. Micah sneezed when Claire surprised him. These are all the same type of sentence, but changing the action verb in each sentence believes us to think of different things. Now make a list of four action verbs that you like. Write a sentence for each of the action verbs that you choose. Which sentence is your favorite? Pause this video and write a short story using all the action verbs you chose. Welcome to Lesson 5, Exercise 3, Day 23. Take this time to pause the video and do your daily prayers out loud. We will be going over quotation marks in this lesson. A quotation is when you copy exactly what someone else has said. For example, Claire said, It is time for class to start. We use quotations because we are stating what Claire said. In order to correctly do this, we use quotation marks which look like this. They let us know the exact words someone has said. When we use a quote in a sentence, there are a few guidelines that are important to keep in mind. First, use quotation marks before and after the quote. Second, use a comma after the last word before the quotation. Three, use a capital letter to start the quotation. If a quote comes first, for example, it is time for class to start, Claire said. Use a comma after the quote and before the ending quotation marks. Let's practice. Add the correct punctuation to the sentences that use quotations. Take some time to pause this video and complete this exercise. Great, here are the answers. Micah said, Jin, come see the temple in my class. Remember, just add the quotation marks. It took a long time to build this temple, said Mr. C. The quotation marks and the comma here, because the quote came first, before this part, said Mr. C. Now, do some practice and write a sentence using a quotation. Welcome to Lesson 5, Exercise 4, Day 24. 
Take this time to pause the video and pray out loud. Today, your assigned reading will be to read David's wise behavior on pages 90 through 91 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible. Then answer the questions on page 91. Pause this video and complete the reading and the questions. Next, copy Psalm 115.13, then memorize it. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. Next, have some fun and copy and color in the picture on page 91. After you're done, Copy the caption from page 91. After you're done, you can move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Lesson 5, Exercise 5, Day 25. Take this time to pause the video and pray out loud. All done? Today, we will be studying U words. They make the short U, long U, and the O sounds. The short U sound can be spelled with U and is usually followed by one or more consonants. The long U sound can be spelled with U, U-E, U consonant E or EW. The O sound can be spelled with OO, OU, U, U consonant E, EW, or UI. Watch these tricky U words. Prove. Done. Learn to spell these words. Short U, done, punish. Long U, cute, nephew, rescue, tube, and unit. U, fruit, glue, group, prove, Smooth truth. The family of U words were invited to join the A, E, I, and O words on their trip, and now they need to pack. Group the words by how they are spelled and put them in the right suitcases. Pause this video and complete the exercise. Great. One short U word spelled with a U, punish. Number two is done. Number three is nephew. Number four is rescue. Number five is cute. Number six is unit. Number seven is smooth. Number eight is group. Number nine is truth. Number 10 is glue. Number 11 is tube. 
Number 12 is through. Number 13 is fruit. And number 14 is prove. Now, pause this video and write a fun sentence using at least two of your spelling words. Then, write a fun sentence using at least two more of your spelling words. Be sure to start each sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. Welcome to Lesson 6, Introduction and Exercise 1, Day 26. Let's pray together today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for getting us through the first five lessons of this book successfully and for letting us start the sixth lesson. Help us to remain faithful to learning English and learning your word through our study of this language. Help us to gain more insights and faith into your creation. I pray this in your name. Amen. Welcome to Lesson 6. This lesson starts off with a picture study of this picture by Frederick George Cotman, titled One of the Family. Take a second to look at this picture. Now, let's answer some questions for your narration practice. Number one, who is the artist of this picture? Number two, what is happening in the picture? Number three, what are some of the things you see on the table? Number four, who do you see in the background? Number five, what colors are used in this picture? Number six, how does this picture make you feel? Why? Take a second to pause this video and answer the questions. <clears throat> Let's look at the answers. Number one, Frederick George Cotman. Number two, there is a family eating and their horse peeks through the window to grab a bite. Number three, I see plates, food, a large pie roast and cups, among other things. <clears throat> In the background, I see the horse. Number five, very bright colors. A lot of whites, darks, and reds and browns. And this picture makes me feel happy. It is a funny picture. Now let's get into exercise one, day 26. Today, we will have you start with story writing, which asks you to finish this, sentence, this story based on the picture. The exercise starts off with a sentence. All the children came running for dinner. It smelled so good. They quickly took a seat. Now, finish writing the rest of the story. Pause this video if you need to. Welcome to Lesson 6, Exercise 2, Day 27. Take this time to pause this video and do your prayer. Done. Today, we will talk about a special type of verb called state of being verbs. Do you remember the eight of them? 
they are, is, am, are, was, were, be, being, being. Memorize these if you haven't already. State of being verbs show state of being rather than action. They link the subject to the predicate. They show that something is there and is existing. Here is a sentence using a state of being verb. Micah and Jin are happy. The linking verb are links the subject, Micah and Jin, to the predicate, which is happy. Without the state of being verb, the sentence would sound weird. Now write a sentence using one of the state of being verbs. Remember what linking verbs are? Linking verbs are a type of state of being verbs. An example being, again, are. Another type of interesting and necessary verb is called helping verbs. Helping verbs help another verb in a sentence. They usually come right before the main verb. Study the helping verbs in the chart and memorize them. An example is, Micah will bring Jin to his class. The cool thing about state of being verbs is that they can also act as helping verbs. Study the helping verbs in the chart and memorize them. The helping verb in this example is will. The verb it helps is bring. Together, the helping verb and the verb will bring show us what is happening in the sentence. They make a great team. The cool thing about state of being verbs is that they can also act as helping verbs. Here is an example. Micah is bringing Jin to his class. The verb is is a state of being verb, but also acts as a linking verb in this sentence. Write a sentence using one of the eight states of being verbs as a helping verb. Next, circle the helping verb in each sentence. Pause the video if you need to, to finish the exercise. Here are the answers. The children should wash their hands. The family will eat supper soon. They must pray before they eat. They might eat pie for dessert. And dad shall wash the dishes. Hey everyone, welcome to Lesson 6, Exercise 3, Day 28. Pause this video and do your daily prayers. Today, we will be going over one of the most important parts of English, which is the comma. We use a comma for many things, but one of the most important uses for the comma is to separate things in a list in a sentence. 
A comma comes after each item in a list except the last item. Study the commas in this sentence and then circle them. Next, write a sentence with a list separated by commas. In the previous example, the commas are right here and right here. So pause this video and write a sentence with a list separated by commas. Now, the next important use for commas is when we address someone. When addressing someone at the beginning of the sentence, we put a comma after their name. For example, Mr. Cunningham, please show us Solomon's temple. When the name comes in the middle of the sentence, a comma goes before and after the name. You, Jin, come closer so you can see. When the name comes at the end of the sentence, a comma goes before the name. Isn't this amazing, Micah? Now for the exercise, put commas where they go in the sentences. Pause this video and complete the exercise. Ready? Does Claire know about the temple, Micah? Claire, did you see the temple? How long, Mr. Cunningham, did it take to build? Great. Now you see how important commas are to the English language. Welcome to lesson six. Exercise 4, day 29. Pause this video if you haven't already and do your daily prayers. Today, we'll be doing another reading. Read Jonathan and David on pages 92 through 93 of 101 Favorite Stories from the Bible. Answer the questions on page 93. Pause this video to complete the exercises and read the story. Next, copy Psalm 145, 20, then memorize it. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Pause this video and work on memorizing this verse. Next, copy the picture on page 93. Color your picture. Then copy the caption from page 93. Afterwards, feel free to move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Lesson 6, Exercise 5, Day 30. Pause this video and pray out loud. Today we will be learning about the ah and the ow sound words. The ah sound can be spelled with al, au, and aw. The ow sound can be spelled with ou or ow. Some ah and ow sound words end with a silent e. Learn to spell these words. Aw, crawl, 
drawn, exalt, false, faucet, fault, launch, and sauce. Ow, frown, howl, mount, pounce, sound, and sprout. The ah uh, and ow uh words were invited to join the fun letter trip, and now they need to pack. Group the words by how they are spelled and put them in the right suitcases. Pause this video and complete the exercise. All done? Great. Number one is false and exalt. Number two is fault, faucet, and launch. Number three is drawn and crawl. Number four is sauce with a silent E. Number five is pounce, also with a silent E. Number six is frown and howl. Number seven is mount, sprout, and sound. Next, write a fun sentence using at least two of your ah spelling words and another fun sentence using at least two of your ow spelling words. Be sure to start each sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. Hey everyone, and welcome to Lesson 7, Introduction and Exercise 1, Day 31. Take this time to pause this video and do your daily prayers. We will continue to read about Micah and Mr. C in this lesson. Let's read this together. After he got home from church, Micah looked up the verses he wrote down in his journal about the holy days he learned about in Mr. Lopez's class last year. Solomon's temple had gotten him thinking about the people going to the temple to celebrate. As he read from Genesis 2, 2-3 and Exodus 20, he tried to imagine the people celebrating the Sabbath at the temple. He couldn't help but chuckle as he thought about those funny Lego men with capes. Next, Micah read about the Day of Atonement. He had written down Leviticus 23, 26 through 32 in his notes. As he looked up the scripture verses, he remembered how sad Mr. Lopez had been when he talked about this holiday. It was a day to remember the cost of sin and to thank God for sending Jesus. Mr. Lopez said the last of the fall holy days was found in Leviticus 23. The Feast of Tabernacles was when the people lived in a tent for a whole week. Micah looked up Zechariah 14.16, where it says all nations will someday celebrate this special time. He wondered if it would be anything like the week his family spent camping in a tent last summer. 
As Micah read through his journal, he thought about how much he missed Jin in his new class. Then a smile came across his face as he thought about Solomon's temple. Micah and Jin couldn't stop talking about it after church. Both boys wanted to learn more about the temple. Micah couldn't wait for his next class. Let's do some narration practice. One, how does the story begin? Two, what holy days did Micah remember? Three, how does the story end? Pause this video and finish these questions. Done? Let's go over the answers. The story begins after Micah gets home from church and looks up the verses he wrote down in his journal. 2. Micah remembered the Sabbath, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. 3. The story ends as Micah reads through his journal and has the desire to learn more. For exercise one, study the picture. Do, you will be doing some observation. Think of a story to go with the picture. Then write down your story in four or more sentences by answering the question. How does your story start? What happens next? Then what happens after that? And how does your story end? Pause this video and complete your story. Then if you have friends or family around, read your story out loud to them. Hello everyone, and welcome to Lesson 7, Exercise 2, Day 32 of this textbook. Take this time to pause this video and do your daily prayers. Today we'll be talking about verbs, which are very important in English. Do you remember that we already studied action verbs, helping verbs, linking verbs, and state of being verbs? State of being verbs link a subject with the predicate in a sentence. Helping verbs help another verb in a sentence. They come before the main verb. If you haven't done it already, memorize these two types of verbs. The state of being verbs are is, am, are, was, were, be, been, and being. being. Helping verbs are has, have, had, do, does, did, can, will, shall, could, would, should, must, may, and might. Sometimes, states of being verbs can also be helping verbs. Sometimes they come before the main verb in a sentence. Using the list of verbs, write either a state of being verb or a helping verb in each sentence. Pause this video and complete this exercise.
All done? Let's go over the answers. Micah is writing in his journal. The temple has or had reminded Micah of the holy days. Micah, and there's a lot of options for this one, did, does, can, will, shall, could, would, should, must, may, might. Enjoy sleeping in a tent for a week. If you have any of these, one of these answers, you are correct. Micah and Jin are or were looking forward to seeing Solomon's temple again. Great, let's move on. Now, circle the helping verb and underline the main verb in each sentence. Pause this video and complete the exercise. Great. Circle the helping verb and underline the main verb in each sentence. Does play. Will help. Should clean. Might build. And were building. The helping verbs are circled and the main verb is underlined. Bonus. Which sentence used a state of being verb as a helping verb? Sentence nine. Because were is a state of being verb, but also a helping verb in this case. Welcome to lesson seven, exercise three, day 33. Take this time to pause this video and do your daily prayers. Remember to pray out loud and in English. Today for exercise three, day 33, we will go into the titles of books, magazines, movies, and plays. When you write a sentence using the title of a book, magazine, or play, there are a few guidelines you must follow. First, underline the title or use italics if, are, if you are using a computer. For example, the diary of Anne Frank is a book title, so you would underline it. Capitalize the first and the last word. And Capitalize all other words except small words that are not nouns, verbs, or adjectives, such as the, for, and and. And you can see I already capitalized them, so T, D, A, and F, and the O is left lowercase because it is not a noun, verb, or adjective. Good. Let's do some practice. Underline the titles in the sentence below. Take some time to pause this video and complete that exercise. All right. Dinosaurs by Design has a lot of good information. That is the title. 
I was in a play called The Christmas Story. Have you watched a Jurassic Ark mystery by Buddy Davis? Next, write the names of the book, movie, or play correctly. Take some time to pause this video and finish the exercise. Great. Swamp Man. Swamp Man. Underlined. Life in the Great Ice Age. Notice how I capitalized every word except for in and the. The Flood of Noah. Again, notice the capitalization. We capitalize T in the because it's the first word of the book. I dig dinosaurs. And that one should be quite easy. Next, write a sentence using the title of a book, movie, or play. Do this in your textbook. Hi all and welcome back to lesson 7, exercise 4, day 34. Take this time to pause this video and to do your daily prayers. For exercise 4, day 34, we will continue on our reading comprehension journey. Read King Solomon on pages 94 through 95 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible and answer the questions on page 95. Pause this video to complete the exercises. Next, copy James 1.5, then pause this video and memorize it. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Then, copy the picture on page 95. Color your picture, then copy the caption from page 95 next to it. After you're done, feel free to move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Lesson 7, Exercise 5, Day 35. Take this time to pause your video and to do your daily prayers out loud. Today we will do some spelling practice with more ah and ow sound words. The ah sound for today can be spelled with A-U-G-H-T and O-U-G-H-T. The ow sound can be spelled with O-U-N-D, ound. Learn to spell these words. Ow sound. Astound, found, ground, and hound. Ah, bought, brought, caught, daughter, fought, fraught, ought, sought, taught, and thought. The new ah and o ow words were invited to join the fun letter trip, and now they need to pack. Group the words by how they are spelled and put them in the right suitcases. 
take a moment to pause this video and complete the exercise. Great, let's go over the answers. One, all words spelled with ought are caught, fraught, daughter, and taught. All words spelled with O U G H T ought are ought. Brought, sought, fought, thought, and bought. Our words spelled with ound are found. Hound, ground, and astound. Now, write a fun sentence using at least two of your awe spelling words. For example, I bought her a yo-yo and I taught her how to use it. Then write a fun sentence using at least two of your outspelling words. For example, I found her a yo-yo and also got her a hound. Be sure to start each sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. Pause this video and complete the exercise. Hey everyone, welcome to lesson 8, introduction and exercise 1, day 36. Pause this video and do your daily prayers if you haven't already. We'll start by doing the reading together portion. Today we will be reading Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. 
Let the sea roar and all it contains. Let the field exult and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. Before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Were there any words you didn't understand? Circle them, then look them up. Don't be afraid to pause this video. Next, let's answer these questions. What chapter of Psalms did you read? How many verses are there in this chapter? What was this Psalm about? What did you learn about God in this psalm? What were your favorite verses? Pause this video and answer all the questions. Let's go over the answers. One, we read chapter 96 of Psalms. Two, there are 13 verses in this chapter. Three, this Psalm is about praising the Lord and how nature worships him and his presence and his eventual coming to judge the earth. Four, we learned that God is powerful and that he is coming. Now, pick three verses in this psalm and devote to memorizing them for the rest of the chapter. The verses should be in a row. Pick at least two verses of Psalm 96. Read the verses out loud, and as you reach each word, clap for each syllable. For example, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Pause this video and do this if you haven't already. Welcome to Lesson 8, Exercise 2, Day 37. Pause this video and pray out loud. For this Exercise 2, Day 37, we will continue on our study of verbs. We will dive more into depth about linking verbs which link a noun or adjective to the subject of the sentence. When state of being verbs aren't acting like helping verbs, they are linking verbs. Here are a few examples. State of being helping verb. I am driving to the store. The word am is the state of being verb. The word driving is the main verb it is helping. Remember, am is helping the main verb, which again is driving. Micah and Jin are good friends. In this sentence, the state of being verb are links words good friend to the subject Micah and Jin. So these two are linked by R. Now, tell whether the state of being verb is used as a helping verb or a linking verb. 
If it is a helping verb, write H after the sentence. If it is a linking verb, write L after the sentence. Hint. Remember, helping verbs help the main verb in a sentence. Pause this video and finish this exercise. All right, let's go over the answers. Micah is writing in his journal. This is a helping verb. The temple was huge. This is a linking verb. Micah and Claire were running to class. Helping verb. Micah and Claire are best friends. Linking verb. Remember, the state of being verbs are is, am, are, was, were, be, been, being. Write a sentence using a state of being verb as a helping verb. Then write a sentence using a state of being verb as a linking verb. Pause this video and finish the exercise. Hey everyone, and welcome to lesson 8, exercise 3, day 38. Pause this video and do your daily prayers. We will be going over writing a paragraph for exercise 3, day 38. A paragraph is a group of sentences that all together talk about a specific idea or topic. A paragraph should follow a few guidelines. It should start on a new line with an indent, include at least four sentences, start with a topic sentence, include two to three sentences that give details about the topic, end with a concluding sentence which should summarize the topic in another way. Now let's read the example together. As you can see, there is an indent, or a little space right here, before the paragraph starts. The topic sentence, which give details about what the paragraph is, says, Micah reads his old journal. The detail sentences are highlighted here, is he was reminded of the lessons he learned in Sunday school. He remembered the holy days Mr. Lopez talked about. He also remembered how much fun he had with Jin in his class. The concluding sentence, which again, should summarize the topic in another way, is, Micah was glad he kept a journal. Now for your exercise, write a journal Write a paragraph about something you like to do. It can be about a class, writing in a journal, swimming, playing a sport, or any other activity you enjoy. Check off each part as you write your paragraph. Write the topic sentence. Remember to indent your topic sentence. Write two to three sentences that give details about your topic. Hint, some things you like about this activity. Then, write a concluding sentence. Pause this video and finish the exercise.
Welcome to lesson eight, exercise four, day thirty nine. Pause this video if you haven't already and f do your daily prayers. For today, we will be doing more reading comprehension. Read Building a Temple for God on pages 96 through 97 of 101 Favorite Stories from the Bible. Then answer the questions on page 97. Pause this video to finish your reading and the exercises. Next, copy Psalm 122.1, then pause the video to memorize it. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Then copy the picture on page 97 and color it in. Afterwards, copy the caption from page 97. After you're done, feel free to move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Lesson 8, Exercise 5, Day 40. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing these children back into this class to study English and to realize the wonders of this language father i pray that they are learning well and understanding the true meaning behind much of what they are reading and learning about your word thank you for everything and i pray this in your name amen for today's exercise five day 40 we will be doing some spelling practice dealing with r words the R, as in car sound, can be spelled with A-R. The A-R, as in air sound, can be spelled with A-I-R and A-R-E. The E-R sound can be spelled with I-R-E-R-U-R-E-A-R -E -E and O-U-R. The ears, as in ear sound, can be spelled with E-A-R or E-E-R. The O-R sound words can be spelled with O-R, O-R-E, and O-U-R. Learn to spell these words. The R, as in car, noise, for sharp. A-R, as in air. Dairy, declare. Er, journey, learn, perhaps, purpose, and twirl. Er, as in ear, appear, career. Or, board, course, score, and warn. The R words were invited to join the fun letter trip, and now they need to pack. Group the words by how they are spelled and put them in the right suitcases. Pause this video and complete the exercises. Right, let's go over the answers. Words spelled with A-R, R as in car, the word is sharp. A-R as in air, words spelled with A-I-R and A-R-E are dairy and declare. E-R words spelled with I-R, E-R and U-R are twirl perhaps, and purpose. 
E-R as in earn, words spelled with E-A-R and O-U-R are learn and journey. E-R as in E-A-R, words spelled with E-A-R and E-E-R are appear and career. O-R words spelled with O-R, O-A-R, O-R-E, and O-U-R are worn, board, score, and course. Next, write a fun sentence using at least two of your AR spelling words. Then, write a fun sentence using at least two of your ER spelling words. Lastly, write a fun sentence using at least two of your OR spelling words. Be sure to start each sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. Pause this video and complete the exercises. Welcome to lesson 9 of this book. Introduction and exercise 1, day 41. Pause this video and do your daily prayer if you haven't already. Today we will continue the story of Micah in the reading titled, Trust in the Lord. On Sunday, Mr. C explained each section of the temple complex and how it was used. This is a replica of the first temple constructed in Jerusalem and was built by Solomon, the son of King David. Its completion gave the Israelites a permanent place to worship for the first time. There are many lessons we can learn from the life of King Solomon, but one in particular is very important. He was fairly young when he became king, but he loved and followed the Lord. Instead of praying for wealth or a long life, he asked instead for wisdom to rule the kingdom well. He built this magnificent temple and encouraged the Israelites to worship the Lord with all their hearts. He started out very strong. Unfortunately, in his later years, he wandered away from God. He began to trust his own judgment instead of trusting the word of God. Sadly, many of the Israelites followed his example. This eventually led to the destruction of this temple by the Babylonians in 586 BC. I built this replica as a reminder to myself to seek the Lord and his wisdom first instead of going my own way. Claire volunteered to read aloud the scripture Mr. C chose for today's lesson, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Micah couldn't help thinking that just a few weeks ago, he had wanted to go his own way. Now let's do some narration practice. Answer these questions. What did Mr. C explain about Solomon's temple? Why did Mr. C build the replica of Solomon's temple? What do you think Micah was thinking about? 
Do you remember what he wanted to go his own way? Take some time to pause this video and to answer the questions. Done? Let's go over the answers. One. Mr. C explained each section of the temple complex and how it was used. Mr. C built the replica of Solomon's temple because there are many lessons that can be learned from it. I think that Micah was thinking about when he didn't want to go to his new Sunday school class. Now, let's continue on to exercise one, day 41. We will be talking about rhyming today. The first type of rhyme that we will study is called the ABAB -A -B rhymes. They are when the two A lines rhyme and the two B lines rhyme. Let's look at an example. A. It is just about time. B. And I can't wait. A. To read a rhyme. B. I can't be late. Wait rhymes with late. And time rhymes with rhyme. The A lines rhyme with each other and the B lines rhyme with each other. It is a fun way to write a poem. Now it is your turn to write an ABAB -A -B poem. Here are a few rhyming words that you can use if you want to. Just make sure you write your poem in the ABAB -A -B pattern. Pause this video and finish your poem. Hey everyone, welcome to Lesson 9, Exercise 2, Day 42. For today, we will do our first quarter review. Each question is worth 5 points and you may use the study sheets in the back of the book. Ready? Pause this video as we go to give yourself enough time to answer the questions. Great job on completing the review. Do the flight plan, a fun little maze to finish up. Use your finger to trace the route to get the plane to the airport. Then use a marker to mark the path. 
Great job today, guys. Hey everyone, welcome to lesson nine, exercise three, day 43. We will be doing our next portion of the first quarter review. Each question is four points. Students may use the study sheets in the back of the book. Pause the video to give yourself enough time to finish the questions. Ready? Get started and good luck. Great job on the past two lessons, guys. I know it was a bit tough doing your first review. Take some time to pause this video and do your daily prayer. Now, let's continue to work on a little bit of reading comprehension. Read Elijah on pages 98 through 99 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible with your teacher. Answer the questions on page 99. Pause this video to read and do the exercises. Done. Next, copy Psalm 33, 18 through 19, then memorize it. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. Pause this video and memorize the verse now. Next, copy the picture on page 99. Color your picture. Copy the caption from page 99 afterwards. Hey everyone, welcome to lesson nine, exercise five, day 45. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you have done to help these students learn so much about this language and about your word and your will in the process. Help us to continue learning more and more and to love you more and more. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Hey guys, this week's lesson is very simple. Just go through the past few lessons and review your spelling. If you are with someone, 
Maybe play the spelling games found in the back of the book. I'll see you next time.